I'm Amy Goodman as we turn to the Gulf Island Kingdom of Bahrain, where a leading human rights activist has been released after nearly two years in prison for his role in pro-democracy protests. Speaking after his release, Nabil Rajab, head of the Bahrain Center for Human Rights, vowed to continue the struggle for democracy under the U.S.-backed monarchy. With great regret, I was imprisoned for giving speeches, my participation in defending the human rights in Bahrain. But really, these two years have changed me to be much stronger. The prison for me was like a school, and I will continue to fight for the people and human rights and with the political societies till we achieve our goals that we started on February 14th. The Bahraini government has waged a crackdown on opposition protesters since an uprising broke out in February 2011. Last month, thousands marched at the funeral of a 14-year-old boy who activists say was killed by shotgun pellets fired by police. Meanwhile, a recent report by Human Rights Watch has found Bahrain's courts play a key role in maintaining the country's highly repressive political order, routinely sentencing peaceful protesters protesters to lengthy prison terms. The report is called Criminalizing Dissent, Entrenching Impunity. For more, though, we go first to the capital city of Manama in Bahrain, where we're joined by Democracy Now! video stream by Nabil Rajab, director of the Gulf Center for Human Rights. Welcome to Democracy Now! And congratulations on your freedom. How does it feel to be out of prison, Nabil? Well, first of all, thank you very much. And I'm happy to talk to you after done more than two years. And uh, please, before I start, I would ask you and I would urge you, please, to continue covering Bahrain, as Bahrain has been ignored and neglected by most of the TV station and the media, because as they own by ruling family in the region here. So I urge you to continue covering Bahrain. Regarding my two years, there is a says that says, that does not kill you, it makes you stronger. And that's what happened to me. I'm stronger than before. I'm more determined uh, to fight for freedom and democracy in my country. I know the struggle, and as I told you more than two years ago, uh, struggle for democracy in this part of the world is not an easy thing. It's a difficult thing. You are uh, dealing with a ruling family that came outside and ruled this country 200 years ago, treated people like slaves. Now we want to change the situation to more democratic uh, environment, it's not an easy thing. It has a cost, and there will be more cost. We've paid a lot of lives, thousands of people behind bar, hundreds of human rights and political activists behind bar. Uh, uh, I mean, at least 5 percent of the Bahraini population were in and out jail in the past three to four years. So it's very costly. We paid the high cost. We did not yet achieve, but the struggle still goes on. And I think we are, from 14 February 2011, we started a revolution, a peaceful revolution calling for democracy. Since that day, we have started one-way ticket, and we are not going to go back till we achieve our democracy. We N know it's difficult. Nabil, on what charges um, were you convicted and sent to prison for two years? Well, first, it was two uh, charges against me, which are one so I was uh, criticizing the prime minister and the other one, a case filed by the minister of interior, and both of them from the same ruling family. Then again, I was uh, charged with uh, taking part in uh, uh, illegal protests, which did not take permission. And for those, uh, I got two years for taking part in a protest, peaceful protest, calling for democracy and respect for human rights. How are you and treated I in prison? Well, I was the only one among thousands of uh, political prisoners isolated from the other prisoners. I was kept in a separate uh, cell, in a separate building. I don't communicate, I don't mix with the other hundreds and thousands of political prisoners. I was with two, three, sometimes four people. Most of them are charged with criminal charges far away from my charges. They, they disconnected me from the outside world. I don't know what's happening outside. I was not allowed to talk on telephone with my family about what's happening outside. So I was not aware in what's happening 
in the country. Nabil Rajab, um, you're speaking to people all over the United States as well as around the world. What is the role of the U.S. Navy Fifth Fleet in Bahrain? The significance um, or what kind of power does the U.S. have in relation to the Bahraini monarchy? Well, Bahrain is uh, maybe other than other country. The Navy plays a big role, the American Navy, more than the American State Department. And for them, a priority is their presence, priority is their interest with Bahrain, priority is their, the arms sale and all that. So we've been ignored uh, completely by American government and Western power. Very disappointing. And I al always say, ignoring the struggle of people and supporting dictators that uh, push people towards extremism. We've been abandoned by the American government. We've been ignored completely. People are dying. People are uh, uh, villages being attacked in daily basis. Mosques uh, were demolished. I mean, you, you, it, we were one of the worst uh, uh, country in the Human Rights Report if in the past few years. But you don't see any action taken by the American government. And instead of that, you see officials going and coming as nothing is happening. They support the dictatorship here, and I don't know, maybe they don't think democracy will serve their interests, so that's why they completely—so I urge the American people, nobody can change that situation. Nobody cha can change the American policy except the American people. I urge American people to pressure the American government uh, through your uh, member of parliament, through your congressman, to change this situation, to, uh, to ask the American government not to support dictators. They are supporting dictators. They are against the struggle of people who are fighting for democracy in this N part of the Nabil Rajab, we're also joined here in New York by Josh Colangelo, who is the consultant to Human Rights Watch, an attorney who uh, wrote the report Criminalizing Dissent, Entrenching Impunity, um, uh, Persistent Failures of the Bahraini Justice System. Um, can you talk about uh, the situation Nabil Rajab has been in and so many others? We have seen um, since 2011, when massive pro-democracy protests began, uh, that Bahraini courts have consistently convicted people and sentenced them to long terms, essentially for expressing opposition to the political system in Bahrain. If you call for the establishment of a republic in Bahrain, that can get you a life term. Uh, if you call for the establishment of a constitutional monarchy, that can get you sent to jail. So this is a pattern that we've seen in military courts that were created uh, during the unrest in 2011, and it continues now uh, in civilian courts as well. What are the main <clears throat> findings now What and uh, recommendations of this report? So we found that Bahraini courts, by their own words, meaning if you simply read their verdicts, are sending people away because uh, the people have said, we want a, a more democratic form of government here. Uh, we also looked at cases in which security personnel have been charged with human rights abuses, and including killings. What we found there is, even when courts concluded that security personnel had committed fairly heinous crimes, beating detainees to death, shooting them at very close range, People would get sentences of six months, for example, uh, which you compared in Nabil's two-year sentence for being at, at uh, a peaceful protest. It really tells you uh, probably everything you need to know about the justice system. And the role of uh, U.S. military sales in the United States? What we have seen is that quiet diplomacy, if that is in fact happening, uh, does not appear to have much effect. Uh, what's interesting to note is that in 2011, after months of a severe crackdown, the King of Bahrain appointed an independent commission to investigate uh, human rights abuses that had taken place, which was, in all honesty, a commendable step. That happened shortly after President Obama openly spoke uh, in critical terms about the situation in Bahrain, which certainly suggests that even uh, public words by the U.S. government can have an effect there. We have not heard those public words in a very long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and how the story of the Akawajas right now. In fact, I wanted to ask you, Nabil Rajab, um, another of the many people who have been imprisoned um, is Abdul Hadi Al Khawaja, um, who also was the director of the Gulf Center for Human Rights, as you were before you were imprisoned and are now. 
Uh, what is happening with him? Well, uh, it is sad and funny that between me and Abdelhad al Khawaja, a few meters, and I could not see him for the past three years. I was in a separate building. My uncle was uh, there also. He's 67 years of age. And he's a few meters from me, but I could not see him. Unfortunately, those people are facing the same circumstances that I have faced, except they are together. They were not isolated like me, but they kept three, four of them together. But Abdel Hadi Khawaja represents the, the issue of how human rights defenders are treated in this country. Other than him, you have Naji Fatil, you have many people. If they are not in jail, they are out of the country. They run away from the situation. Because except me, I don't think there are much human rights activists out of jail now. Are you going me, to continue to speak out, Nabil? Yes, I'm going to continue. In fact, in the past few days, the newspaper were talking about me and telling me that soon I'm going to go back to jail because I did not keep quiet as they thought or as they expected. And then again, I tell you this, somebody has to pay the price to achieve democracy and freedom. And Josh Colangelo, what the U.S. could do to change the situation, the significance of the uh, Navy's fifth fleet there? Well, some people say that because we want to have this naval base, that the U.S. is without leverage. In other words, it has to be committed to the, the current system as it exists. What we know, though, is that the Bahrainis, uh, in their view, are very much reliant on the U.S. for their own security. So certainly that is a, a two-way street. Um, and whatever quiet efforts may have been going on, again, they don't seem to be bearing fruit. So it's, it's time to, to change tack.